New Brunswick needed a break today. It didn't happen. The days of rising waters were supposed to end, but the long-awaited peak of the St. John River has now been pushed ahead for a few more days. And people are left to just watch the elements toy with their lives and their homes. This is our, was our deck, our sunroom. And we are safe, everyone. I don't want anyone to worry. We're not going to put ourselves... This is Grand Lake. Oh, boy. More than 1,100 residents have registered as evacuees, a number that has grown day after day. Now there are warnings the water is spreading danger because it's overwhelmed the sewer systems and unleashed contamination. The Coast Guard is helping out, but the province still says it doesn't need a military intervention. Now, the worst of the unprecedented flooding affects the southern parts of the province. The hardest hit areas are along the path of the St. John River. Here's the CBC's Jayla Bernstein with the view from there. There are no signs of retreat from the swollen St. John River. It's flooded downtown Fredericton and swallowed shorelines as it travels south, submerging homes and leaving the terrain unrecognizable along its path to St. John. What really stands out when you get a view from the water rather than from land is the contrast in the damage here. Some people are high and dry and then just meters away other houses are submerged. Where's your deck at? Where can I get into? For people here, it's been days of steadily playing defense and they just want to see the water go away. Pull the plug, please. <laughs> That's all I can say. Until the water does recede, river patrols are out every day, checking on those who choose to stay behind. We spent the day on the Harbour Princess, watching emergency crews in action. Patrols face all sorts of submerged surprises, including floating debris. And when they do make it to dry land, it's a matter of canvassing homes now cut off from the mainland to make sure residents are safe. Those people that are surrounded uh, that are that are threatened by water we would still strongly recommend they leave there are other people that have found a way to 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 uh, sustain their existence so you know if they're if they're there and and continue to sustain themselves then we'll support them as best we can but we get we have an understanding of how bad it's going to get despite those warnings residents like herb shoebridge are sticking it out i've got a 15 year old dog that uh, is uh you know you have to figure out what you're going to do with the dog and then my wife is blind, so that doesn't help. And so I said, what the heck? What comes next depends on the weather. If anybody had that 1-800 number to Mother Nature, you know, to ask her how long it's going to be. But you can't predict anything. You just have to ride it out. And Jayla Bernstein joins me now. Jayla, I know it's a little hard for people to see, but I gather you're actually standing in the rain, which cannot be a good sign. What's the outlook there? Exactly. The rain is coming down here in St. John along the harbour and the rain's expected to continue tonight into tomorrow morning. What you have to consider here is that the ground is already so saturated here in St. John. Plus, we have a snowpack still in the northern part of New Brunswick that's melting, feeding into that swollen St. John River. So that all spells out really bad news for the already mentally and physically exhausted residents here. Yeah, they really do need a break. Jayla, thanks very much. Thank you. So let's get some perspective on the scale of this flood. Ten years ago, similar conditions raised the St. John River to 5.2 metres in the St. John area. A legendary flood in 1973 was even higher, 5.4 metres. Those numbers were old news by Thursday morning. This morning, a new record of nearly 5.7 metres and counting. As you saw in Jayla's story, there are a lot of damaged houses. So what are the options for homeowners? Most basic home insurance policies don't include overland flood insurance. But over the past several years, following damaging floods in Calgary and Toronto, several companies have started offering overland flooding insurance for some homes. But here's the thing. You have to ask for it and qualify for it to be added to your policy. For homes that aren't covered, residents can apply for government disaster assistance. New Brunswick offers up to $160,000 for homes and $500,000 for small businesses. One potential snag, if you are eligible for that overland flood insurance but haven't purchased it, you might not qualify for government help either.